Hello, hello, everybody. I am going to start off by just asking if you guys can hear me. Sorry for being a few minutes late. I was actually struggling classically with the audio. So um, I just got that going. So can you all hear me? <laughs> Technical difficulties here. Basically, the story of my life. Um, can you hear me is the question. If anybody can hear me, please let me know. Um, oh, you can hear me. Okay, that's a huge win. <laughs> I was like, why is, the, why is the microphone not working? Um, for those of you who don't know, we have moved, we have changed studios, and it's the same setup, but new location, and comes with a whole lot of new challenges. My, um, is it a little crackly? Let's see if I can turn down the volume a little. Is it better yet? Any less crackly? Better? Is that still crackly? Popping. Crackled sound. Okay, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to just quickly see if I can see what's going on here. See if we can speak on him. Any less crackly? I see, I see. Better? Is that still crackly? Um, let's see what's happening here. Just see if that is any less crackly. Is anything any better? Um, too quiet. Thanks, guys. Is it better now? Can you hear me? Just see if that is any less crackly. Anything any better? So much better. Okay. We're going to do it with a headset today. Microphone. Bye. <laughs> is it better now. Can you hear me? Okay. Cool. That is that is good to know. I'm gonna put it down maybe just a touch. Okay, there we go. Um there's always something. There's always something. So much better. Okay. Um thanks guys for your um for your feedback as always. <laughs> it's very it's a weird um format these live streams. Because obviously, as my students and community members know, I am so incredibly used to doing, um, to doing um, these live streams. Is there still an echo? It might have been the desktop audio, actually. I was just listening back. Um, no, the mic battery is actually, it's, it's a very nice um, plugged-in mic, which is completely plugged. So I don't really know why it's crackling. Um, except maybe that there's like a loose wire or something causing drama. I, I, I actually don't know. Um, yeah, thanks. The echo, I think, was just the, the playback that I was getting. So hopefully our audio, is, audio woes are sorted for now. Good. Well, welcome, welcome, everybody. So nice to spend this time with you guys and hang out and specifically today chat through some scales and have a little bit of fun with scales actually and just show hopefully show you guys that scale practice can actually be a huge amount of fun if we allow it to be um and i want to kind of walk you through so i'm going to move this rather useless microphone out the way <laughs> since it's you've betrayed me you've betrayed me <laughs> it's always something with technology so I want to start off actually and um, just take a bit of a kind of a moment to actually chat through why scales are so important. So um, why we really should and need to be practicing scales. Now, for those of you who have been around for a little while, you know the answer to this already, and I've probably said it a thousand times, but I think sometimes we have to hear the same thing over and over and over again. I recently had a student who, I mean, I've been saying this for years, right? And we, we were busy playing a particular piece of music. And she was like, oh, my goodness. I, you know, we kind of went through it, and I showed her where all the scales were. And she was like, oh, my goodness. I know you've said this a thousand times, but it just finally actually makes sense. Like, I can see it in the music, why this is so unbelievably important. So... Again, I don't think you can hear these things too many times, so I'm going to repeat myself. I will absolutely do it. And I thought, actually, one of the best ways to show you this is to actually really show you this in musical examples. 
Um, and actually, I've got a little bit of a, of a fun challenge for you guys, and um, we'll, I'll show you guys in a moment. By the way, before we get started, before we get started, I'm actually going to give you a really quick, quick, quick moment, if you haven't, to do two things. Grab a notebook, just so that you can make some notes for yourself, because I'm going to share with you guys a couple of like nice little like, um, like do's and don'ts and some like tip, tips on an approach to practice. The other thing is go and grab your flutes because we are actually going to be playing a little bit today because that's what we're here for. We're here to play flute. So I'm going to encourage you, go grab your flutes. Nobody can hear you. You can only hear me, I hope. <laughs> and we're actually going to have a little bit of fun with this um, and do some playing. So go and do that quickly. I'm quickly, I did a quick moment restart before we joined the stream because I was worried my computer was not behaving. So I'm quickly just going to pull up my notes again, which I have forgotten to do while you grab your flutes and a piece of paper. Very, very important. Well, a notebook. I'm sure I've showed you guys this before, but um, I have got the world's it's not the nerdiest notebook because it's not flute related, but I've got this really cute little notebook and it says, okay, you can't really see it, but it says positively perfect on it. I also have one that says, no, this is, yeah, positively. I also have a one that's about a dog and I'm trying to remember what's on that one, but it's also really cute. <laughs> I think it might've been positively perfect. I think that might be it. Cool. Um, so, I'm trusting that everybody's got, um, has got their notebooks. I'm, you guys still with me? I'm, the chat is very quiet. I'm hoping it's because you're fetching your flute in your notebooks. <laughs> but if anybody is there, please put a comment in so that I, I know that I'm still around and not uh, disconnected. Good. Um, for, for those of you who are totally new around here, you know that I have a bit of a like spotty and dodgy history with live streams. When <laughs> I've had some, um, I think probably because I had very high expectations, but some not so ideal live streams in the past. So I'm always, um, thank you, Gail. So I'm always kind of like, live stream, ah, <laughs> it still kind of freaks me out. But I think we should just do more live streams and then we can, I can just get over my fears, right? I, I tell you guys to get over your fear of practicing and scales and all kinds of stuff all the time. So here I am in the hot seat with you guys. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> it makes me not feel so alone when you comment, so thank you. Okay, so... Uh, Let's, let's start off by actually just looking at some, some real life musical examples of scales, because I think it's a really, really, really helpful way to see this in action and, and why they are so unbelievably important. So this is a piece, um, for those of you who are part of our premium membership, you guys know we put out these um, practice resources once a month, which have your scales and technical exercises and studies. And then um, a couple of, what is almost a year ago, actually, we put out this little Bach minuet as one of the pieces. And this is actually a really good example of what scales you need to be able to play. I'm going to see if I can maybe zoom in just a touch here without messing everything up completely. Okay, that should be a little bit better. So you can see here, just to bring that up. There we go. Okay. So what you can see here is everybody, I mean, I can play a little bit. I'm hoping this audio isn't going to be horrific. Let's just, is that okay audio wise? Or not as good as my other microphone, but we've got, so bring me that down. Very famous little melody that, right? Most of you possibly have played it or you recognize it. And here's the thing. The in, pretty much most of this is just scales. Scales. And um, maybe in the very beginning when you first learned this, you were like, oh, it's you know, challenging and difficult. But actually, if you see it in the context of it's mostly just either a G major or a D major scale, you realize it's actually not that complicated. So we have this first little bit, there's a scale, pure little scale from G, obviously just going up to the D. Da, 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 dum. Then we have again, the next part of the G major scale, this time from the C going up to the G. Da, 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 dum. And coming down again. Da, 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 dum. Da, 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 dum. 
go, well, coming down to the F sharp. And it goes on like that. Then we move on here. Again, we've got sort of little bits and pieces of scales and actually arpeggios for that matter. And then, we, and then we go on here where we've got now a nice D major scale starting on the A. Here again, we've got a G major scale starting on the D. Now, if you're completely overwhelmed, just take my word for it for now. <laughs> but these are really just little scales. They're just starting and ending on notes, on, on different notes. Um, and, and, and that is exactly why scales are so important, because they come up in music all the time. They are so, 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 so foundational to music. And when we practice our scales, and when we especially really, really, really know our scales well and can play them from memory, we see this in a piece of music and our brains go, oh, we've practiced that. We know that one. We're cool. It's going to be fine. Whereas if we don't know our scales, we're like, trying to memorize and learn individual notes, and we're like, okay, it's a G, A, B, C, and it becomes a thousand times more difficult to do, quite seriously. So this is a really nice, simple example of scales, but uh, let's look at something that's a lot more complex and complicated and see how this applies as well. Uh, no, not that, not that. Ah, you see it, no, it must be here. Um, did I open it? I may have forgotten to open it. Sorry, just give me a quick second. I'm going to open it for you guys. And we go, here we go. Uncle Gobert, Philippe Gobert. Very, very beautiful, very, um, quite a famous, more advanced flute piece. So it's sort of on the, I think it's usually on the sort of grade six scale lists for those who know it. I mean, uh, exam, what's it? Exam syllabi. Um, and beautiful, again, I'm just going to play the opening here for you guys. So we have... Beautiful, beautiful melody. And of course, within that, there are like lots of scales. I mean, there you've really got a nice G major scale going down. So lots of scales there. Um, but everybody, you know, you get through this. When you start getting to this part of the page, most people are already like, ah. Oh, there's lots of sharps and then you start getting to this part of the music and everybody starts having a like full-on meltdown and panic because there's like f suddenly five sharps or six sharps here or whatever how many sharps I'm not even gonna count how many sharps there are right now and flats and all kinds of things going on but actually when you, you start pulling it apart which we're gonna do in a moment you start to be like oh okay again scales arpeggios scales arpeggios so um, and again, for those of you who've never seen this piece or you're like um, <laughs> having a mild meltdown here, don't stress, but just follow the logic here. So if we're playing from, oh, goody, um, Trevinia, that's cool. <laughs> you're learning this piece. Well, then here's a good lesson in it. So if you're playing from the Piamoso over here, um, we can look from here. Now, again, I've got lots of experience with scales. If you don't see these scales straight away, don't panic. So we've got this. E major, E major, it's an E major scale. How I know that is because I've got an F sharp from the key signature, I've got a C sharp, I've got a D sharp, and I've got a G sharp. So I count and I'm like, okay, there's four sharps. Oh, it's E major. Um, then I have, I go down here. This is actually, again, I'm gonna zip through this because there's a lot to cover today and I want to not be here till midnight. But here we've got an E flat major scale. Uh, sorry, this is the B flat major scale. Later on here, I've got an F major arpeggio. It's, everybody freaks out about this entry and it's just F major. We go into this kind of, uh, I think it was a D flat major section, sort of, uh, sort of changes. It's sort of E flat and going to D flat. Then we have, again, this E major section here. E major. Then this little run. Everybody freaks out about this little run. They're all like, oh, that, you know how to read that and practice that. But actually, when you realize it is just an F sharp major scale. Now, I know F sharp major is like way down the line and, and quite advanced. But the point is, if you know an F sharp major scale, this part is not actually that difficult, right? It's just F sharp major. You're like, oh, okay, cool. So it's just... Uh, the top part of that of that little scale. 
So again, and then you have also this little bit, um, this little, these little runs, which when you look at it, you analyze it, you see it's just E flat major scales in different patterns. So I think when we see how unbelievably um, fundamental they are in music, we realize that's not just the only reason to practice scales, but it's a really big one and a big, big, big reason why we should practice scales. Um, there is, there are kind of what I like to kind of think about scales almost like having two sides to scale practice. So the one side is you have kind of, which is this, which is finding the scales in the music and actually almost being able to memorize your scales and know your scales so that when you see it in the music, your brain is like, we're cool. We got this. So that's the one side of it. The other side of it is to actually have, um, to actually use your scales for technical development, to actually use them as a tool to improve and get better. And I think it's really important to kind of realize that there are these two sides to scale practice because in some ways we, we tend to kind of get fixed on the one or the other. So sometimes we're just practicing our scales as a way to improve our technique. And then other times we're so obsessed with, with the memorization and, and kind of um, being able to move between different scales that we don't actually use them to practice our technique. And so we need to kind of realize both these different sides of scales and use both of these sides of scales. And I'm going to give you guys some suggestions a little, a little bit on how to do this um, carefully. Okay, now what I find is that very often, um, well, actually, no, 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 no. I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm not following my own plan here. <laughs> I actually want to, to start off um, by doing a little challenge with you guys. So what, I'm gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with something really nice and easy. And um, we're going to do a little kind of sight reading challenge. And what I'm going to what I'm going to ask you guys to do: take your flutes out. I'm serious. Take your flutes out. And I'm going to we're going to have an easier version, easier version of this. Sorry, I don't have the easy, easy version of this. But uh, sorry, I mixed up all my stuff here. Okay. So this is the easier version of this, where we actually now we're not going to sight read all of it, but we're actually going to sight read this together. I'll make it bigger for all of us for our own sanity. Okay. So here's the little piece. You're going to sight read this, and what I want you to do is I want you to, it's in C major, which hopefully, like, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you guys kind of have learned. If you haven't learned it, well, the now's a really good time to start. Um, but we, hopefully you've learned at least C major. There is a little bit of A minor Oh no, this is actually an A minor. Sorry, I take it back. But the first part, at least the first line, is in A minor, but you can get away with it if you know your C major scale. Okay, but it's, it's a nice little one because it really is based on your scales as well. So what you're gonna do is take out your flutes. Now, of course, this is a fairly, a fairly easy sight read. And, um, and we're, gonna, we're gonna learn it, and we're gonna sight read it together. So see how you do, and I'm gonna ask you at the end of this, I'm going to ask you to sight read it, and you're going to rate yourself. Technique class members, you guys know this really well. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs middle. So thumbs up, ah, I got it first time, awesome. Thumbs down, I did not get it at all. And thumbs middle is like, I kind of got it. I can't, you know, it was a little dodgy, but I got it. Um, Craig, uh, to answer your question, this is not part of my scale book, these studies. Um, however, this is actually so... We've got the scale course and what we are adding to the scale course, we're relaunching it next week. Again, I'll tell you guys about that in a, in a moment, but we're actually um, adding studies with the different keys that you learn to that scale course as well. And spoiler alert, but this will be one of the, one of the studies <laughs> in, the, um, in the course. Um, we've separated it out into different levels. So we have like, into, uh, what do we have? We've got uh, like late beginner, I think late beginner we start with, we've got novice, uh, what we call developing, which is that sort of in between that and this phase. We've got early intermediate, which is this, and we've got intermediate, advanced, and very advanced studies. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> forgot your reading glasses. Yes, dog ate my homework too. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Yes, this live stream will absolutely be saved and will be available on the channel um, for later. Okay, so let's try. Let's give this a go. So you're going to sight read. Now, for those of you who are advanced, like genuinely see how fast can you sight read this. And what you're going to do is you're just going to rely on the fact that you know your scales, hopefully A minor and C major. So you're really just going to, now I know it says lento. I'm full on ignoring that for this sight read, but I'm going to do. I 
I just want to stop there, sorry. This is, this is wonderful. For any of you who know my scale book, this is purely out of the scale book. It was wonderful. My brain got there. My brain went, I know this. I practice this every day of my life for the last like 10 years. <laughs> Again, because my brain can see these patterns, I can actually sight read this really quite fast, right? Really quite fast. And I genuinely promise I've never, I, I don't think I've ever played this. Um, I chose it because I look at it and I kind of sing the melody in my mind and I'm like, oh, that's a nice little study and that looks lovely. But because we're collecting hundreds of these studies, I don't have time to play all of them. So um, it is purely sight reading for me. It's a nice study, though, if I dare say so myself. <laughs> it's quite cute. Very nice little scale study, this. Okay. So let's give it, let's give it a go. I want thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs middle. How did you do with the sight, the sight read? Um, was it easy for you? Uh, did you... Did you enjoy, I mean, did, was it easy? Did you manage it first time? Sorry, I'm just going to make this a bit smaller. Oh, come back to me. Where are um, Messing around with this a little bit. Um, was it easy? Did you manage it first time? Was it challenging? Did you not manage it? Maybe, or you got like a couple of mistakes, or you sort of stopped in between. Mistakes are fine. I mean, if you like stopped and full on had to like, uh, 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 where am I? Or did you not manage at all, like you fell apart from moment one? So you can just find your little thumbs emoji. I don't know if there's a thumbs middle emoji. I guess we'll have to find something else, actually. I didn't think about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's also like, wait a minute. I don't think there's a thumbs middle. I'm wondering what like standard emoji we can use. Maybe like this, the, the, this I'll put it in the chat, this like tooth emoji. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one for thumbs middle. It's the, <laughs> the girl. Uh, is there even a thumbs down? Like, that would be a little sad. Um, we, we usually do this. Uh, okay, there's at least thumbs down. There's a thumbs down version. Um, I, anyway, we, you, can, you can choose a, a, an appropriate, please, um, other symbol for, for middle. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's go to a more challenging site read now. Because we can, because we can. Oh, you guys thought you were going to come here and drink coffee and just chill, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm joking. If you are drinking coffee and chilling, that's totally fine. Um, okay, so this is now a, it's, oh, I love these little studies. These are like some of my absolute favorite studies. Um, Maria, about not being able to play it so quickly, don't stress. Really don't stress like this, you know, every, I always recommend sight reading like comf at a comfortable tempo and then maybe pushing yourself like just a touch. Um, you don't want to be, oh, make that too big. There we go. You don't want to be, um, you don't want to be, you know, you want to make it manageable and then add a little bit of like <sighs> fear for yourself. Okay. So now this is probably going to be um, like out of more of your, abilities at this point. These are from these Babagir, I never know how to say his name, so if there are any French friends around, I apologize for butchering this dear man's name. Or oh, I think he was French. Anyway, yes. Um, but his etude book, I love these etudes. They're lovely kind of, um, I'd so say they're sort of, they're advanced etudes, but they're not like super duper advanced. They're sort of like, be, like early advanced or early to that early advanced stage. I'd say sort of a grade seven, six to seven to eight level, um, these studies, depending on the study. And we're going to do the same thing for those who can. The rest of you sit back and enjoy the ride. <laughs> um, but sorry, I know you can't see me right now. Maybe I can change that quickly so that you can hopefully just see me a little bit. Um, there we go. I don't want to interrupt the sight reading, so I'll make myself small. <laughs> Actually, that's a good idea. Okay. So again, I'm going to side treat. Now, I, I will, I'm going to like disclaimer here. I'm very sure I've played this study before. So this is not really side treating in the sense that, you know, it's full on side treating, but I'm going to read it in the sense that I haven't practiced it in probably a long time. Okay, let's do it. So again, we're going to discover lots of scales here. So... <laughs> I 
and we go. So again, the interesting thing is what my brain does here, consciously like there is a C major arpeggio and there is, it's more that my brain is kind of subconsciously guessing because it knows those patterns so well. It's busy going, tick, 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 signing patterns to, to visuals, patterns to visuals, and then the fingers go along. Um, so, again, just giving you a really, hopefully, a, a, a full understanding as to how unbelievably important these are and why they are so important. Um, and not entirely just to show off my, <laughs> my, my scales ability, although just a little bit because hopefully it'll inspire all of you to practice as well. Okay, so that was our... Does anybody want a chance still to sight treat it? I'm going to give you like... I don't know, 10 seconds. You get 10 seconds to sight read this now and the rest of you, I don't know, consider your life choices. I, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I feel like, no, I must, I must be quiet. Shh, 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 shh. Sight read, go, go. Sight reading, sight reading. Okay. I think that's genuinely as quiet as you're gonna get me in my entire life, so <laughs> well done. <laughs> Yeah, a quarter of the speed. Yeah, let's do for those of you who did try this the challenge. Um, up, thumbs up, thumbs down, or an alternative appropriate emoji. Um, yeah, give it a give it a go. Yeah, look, look again. I, I, the only reason I played at that speed is because I know I can sight read it, and I've played it before. So I'm like, I've got to put myself under at least a little bit of like duress here and pressure here, so that I'm like <gasps> a little bit like the switch I was, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> like I've got to, you know, the mountain I have to jump off is a lot higher than than what most of you guys probably have to do. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm um, just make myself large again. Look at me moving myself around here. Um, Sorry, I messed with my own screen here. That's why I'm just correcting, fixing this. And um, we're going to go on to the actual scale part of this of the session and look at some hopefully really nice and practical ways to approach your scales and practice your scales. So I mentioned that um, that we've got these two sides of practicing scales, right? So we've got the the kind of technique side and the memorizing side and both are equally important um now even before we can get to that pace, space where we're like okay am i practicing memorizing my scales today or am i practicing them to practice other techniques we first have to get to a place where we actually learn our scales and know our scales and for that we need some kind of a plan and i think people that get completely overwhelmed by their scales are doing are not practicing or learning their scales in a methodical, logical way. And the problem then is, is that all you're seeing is 12 majors, 12 minors, melodic, harmonic, and maybe natural, but maybe let's say, let's say 24 minors, so now we're already sitting at 36 scales, then there's another 24 arpeggios, so now we're sitting at, what, 60 scales, and then we've got still like chromatics and diminished and dominance, which come later, or, you know, maybe you don't know they come later even, but you have I think I've worked it out, it's like 120 scales if you really do like all the chromatics and whole tones and everything on all the notes and all of that. Okay, So it is insane, right? It is crazy. It is crazy to expect you to learn all the scales in one go. It's insane. And it certainly can feel incredibly overwhelming when you're standing in front of this like mountain of scales and you just don't know how on earth to go about it. And, and so I think the first thing to recognize is that you need a system or a plan of some kind. And I think one of the big mistakes that many players make is that they think that they need to, either that they need to learn all the scales in one go. So even if you're learning them like one at a time and, you know, you, you think you have to know all your majors and all, you know, like 12 keys right away. And here's my, here's my, my kind of pushback on that, which is, Royal schools, exam boards, for those of you who know the, the kind of graded systems, there are a whole bunch of them around the world, grade one to eight, and they kind of like in eight grades and they progressively get more and more and more challenging as you go. The royal schools 
do not expect you to know all your scales. Neither do Trinity, neither does the um, um, Australian Music Board, neither does the South African, we've got a UNISA Music Board, neither does the Canadian, like none of these scale, um, these exam syllabi expect you to know all your scales at the beginning. They all step it up gradually, 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 gradually. So I think that's the first really important thing to know is you don't need to learn them all in one go. Okay, we're going through a little list of do's and don'ts, so you might want to write these down. You don't have to know them all in one go. Um, the other thing is you don't have to play all your scales two octaves straight away. And in fact, very often when you are learning a new scale, for example, like you maybe you're learning A major for the first time, do it one octave. Do it one octave. Remember, there's two sides to a scale. There is learning the scale and memorizing the scale and getting to know the actual scale and kind of slotting it in with the rest of your other scales. And then there is the technical side of the scale where it's improving your technique. So yes, you can do it two octaves eventually, and then you've kind of got to go through the technical hurdle of the high register and getting those fingerings and all of that. But actually, you don't have to do that straight away. So start off easy and small, maybe just one octave at a time. Okay, very important. Then you can play your scales. There was a nice discussion going on about slow practice. Um, and two said violin, if you can play it slowly, you can play it quickly. Yes, absolutely. You absolutely should play your scales as slowly as you can think about your scales. That's, that's always my golden rule. People ask, how slowly? Well, as slowly as you could think about the next note that you have to play. And I mean, think like, oh, my next note is E, not Ah, oh, what note was that? <laughs> okay, so when you can actually think about your next note. Then we have, um, so that's play, play them really slowly. Um, you need to understand your scales. Now, I know this is, you know, you don't have to like go through the whole history of why scales are round and, you know, all the detailed, like exactly how they're constructed, but you need to have a basic understanding of your scales. And you certainly need to be able to tell me, like, how many sharps has E major got? go, you know. Now, if you haven't played E major, I don't expect you to know that, but you should be able to say F major, one flat, without thinking about it in your sleep. Just kind of launching into a scale and hoping for the best is, in my opinion, really dangerous, <laughs> especially on the flute. Like on other instruments such as piano or, or violin, you can get away with this much better because it's much more finger patterns than it is actual, like understanding the sharps and the flats. But the problem with the flute is the sharps and the flats are always in the same place, right? There is no finger pattern with a scale. I mean, there's, some, there's a sense of kind of muscle memory where your, your fingers kind of remember the movements a little bit, but actually, the fingers are always moving onto the same notes. So like um, a simple example of this would be if I'm playing D, E, F sharp, G, right? Same fingering. It could be G major, but it could also be D major, right? So it's, it's actually quite difficult to know now, like, you know, just, by, just based on the feeling of those fingers moving and, and even maybe seeing it exactly what scale that is. Whereas on, pia on piano and violin, there's much more like different scales have different finger combinations, if that makes sense. So there's kind of a finger pattern that's very unique to a scale. Now, there is a little bit of overlap, but not quite in the same way. So very, very, very important to know, understand your scales. Same with the minors. Oh, my goodness. If I say to you play D minor, your brain should straight away be going, ooh, relative major, F major. Ooh, what's the raised seventh if I'm playing the harmonic minor, C sharp? Now, if this is overwhelming, you're like, I don't know this, or how am I supposed to know this? We've, we've number one, got um, a lot of kind of uh, videos explaining, and I'm sure there are like thousands of videos online explaining all the scales of the majors and minors. We've actually got a whole playlist. Um, if anybody is feeling, well, actually, maybe I can just quickly go and grab that playlist for you guys, pop it into the chat for you. But basically, you know, we've got a whole playlist of scales where you actually, we take you through the scales, like how to play them from start to finish. Ah, okay. I'm just going to pull this up for you guys really quickly. And um, in terms of, yeah, we go through the majors, we go through the minors, we go through the chromatics, we go through that whole, the whole lot for you guys. Okay, I'm going to post it here for you guys. So for anybody who's like, I need a, I need a, um, I need a, like a bit more help understanding my scales. Really important, understand your scales. And then 
once you've learned, and, and so then the other side of it is, you know, yes, understand how scales are constructed, but when you start learning the scales, start doing them one at a time. And what you do is you go through, so for example, you say, okay, I'm just going to start with F major. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you guys through my very specific system in a moment. But I'm, I'm going to say, okay, I'm starting with F major. I'm going to like learn my F major scale. And then I'm going to add scales to that progressively. I'm going to add, 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 add. So don't be like, I'm going to learn these 10 scales. <laughs> no, no, no. Start one at a time, tiny little blocks, one after the next one, and build, 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 build on that as you go. Um, and this is, this is a tough one. And you know how many like more advanced players I've come across that never did this? And I, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit brutal. I torture them into this, but it's, it is so necessary. Memorize your scales. Absolutely memorize your scales. Now, actually, when you understand how the scale works, you don't really have to memorize the scale per se. Like, I don't have to memorize F major, but I do have to almost memorize the information about the scale. Um, you can work it out. There are ways to work it out. And I, again, in those videos, I actually explain it. But you at least need to be able to tell me, like, you know, D major's got two sharps within at least a few seconds. If you have to quickly work it out in your brain, that's fine. Eventually, you do learn it by memory. You don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, it's so, so, so important to memorize your scales. And most of this work is best done away from the flute. Not joking. You can genuinely just be like sitting there and being like, E major has got how many sharps in it? And just be able to give that information back as quickly as possible. Now, with that, um, no, I think I'm going to mention that a little bit, a little bit later. Yes, okay. The, the, last, the last really important do of learning your scales is you need to repeat, 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 repeat. Do I need to say it more times? I think not. <laughs> you really need to be able to repeat this process again and again and again and again in your scales. In fact, a um, little spoiler alert, I've got, a, I've got a fun short coming out that involves playing some more scales. And uh, for those of you that I did one a while ago, I could have play all my majors in a minute. Or well, we're doing some more of those little like one minute challenges. But um, for it, I, I can't just pick up my flute and like cycle through all the scales in one go. I actually do have to practice it a few times myself and like remind my brain of it. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And, I, and then I go through it like three or four times. And I mean, I wish I could just film a video of how quickly that improves. It's actually amazing. <laughs> I'm like, in the beginning, I'm like, ah! And then by the third or fourth time, there's like one or two little slips like in terms of my memory, but actually I'm doing okay. So repetition is so important with scales and it, it should be more or less, I think if you practice a scale every day, just one scale every day. That would be my recommendation. Just one. And if you do nothing else in a day but pick up your flute and play a scale, me as your teacher would be very happy. <laughs> and I've actually told very busy students to do that. I'm like, you've got no time. And just, just take your flute, play one scale, put it away. You've done good. Awesome work. Okay. Okay. So those are our do's and don'ts of flute scales. So... Um, here's what's going to happen. We're going to start off by, um, I want you to guys to put like a key, like, yeah, any, any, like, uh, how do I, how do I exp explain this? Um, any note or any note between F, uh, A and G. So one of the notes, including any of your sharps and flats. I want you guys to put it in the chat box. The first one that I see three of is going to be the chosen is going to be the chosen note. Okay, so go for it. Um, B flat, D, E, B flat two times. We've got B, which is actually German, so B flat is the key. Okay, I'm going to hang on to B flat there because um, um, so I know in Germany B is is actually B flat. Okay, cool. So here's the challenge time. Here's what we're going to do. I feel like um, maybe I tricked you guys just a little bit <laughs> because <laughs> here's what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to spin the wheel. Sorry, it seems a little 
teeny tiny, make that wheel a little bit bigger so we can see the wheel better. So I'm going to spin the wheel and it's going to land on one of these different things. So um, either a harmonic minor, a natural minor, a major, a melodic minor, a arpeggio, um, a chromatic, dominant seventh, diminished seventh. And whatever it lands on, I have to play, but you also have to play if you can. If you can. If you can't play like, if it's like a B flat melodic minor, and you're like, I can't play that, um, then just play a B flat major one octave scale, or you just, you know, give a, give a, have a good laugh and, and, and just realize it's gone. Okay, yes, we're back to spin the wheel. I was like, how can I include spin the wheel in this? <laughs> okay, so let's spin. Let's spin, let's spin, let's spin. Um, how do I spin the wheel again? I'm actually trying to remember how I spun the wheel last time. I didn't think this one through. <laughs> Maybe I've got a, um, maybe it was under this. Sorry, guys, as usual, um, everything changes. Um, hey, Mr. Wheel. Do I remember how to spin you? Oh dear. <laughs> I think I've forgotten how to spin the wheel. It's amazing. Repetition, hey? The last time I did this was in October. And it's amazing how um, quickly you actually forget how to do stuff that I did just back then. Um, but perhaps I can... Yeah, I need. I know. I need Andrew, Andrew to the rescue, and he's busy doing something also super well. It is actually quite important. He is busy um, looking at at. Um, he's busy building stuff for my studio. The dear soul that he is. Okay. Well, sorry guys, this is a little sad because I can't remember how to spin the wheel. It's okay. I'm going to do what every developer in the whole wide world does, and I'm going to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, I will challenge all of you guys. Hi from India, lovely to have you here. I know I could do, I was actually planning to do slips of paper until my audio was not playing along and then I got into trouble. Um, I'm just gonna check here very quickly. I'm sure there's like a super easy way to do this. Um, so let's just quickly look. Um, which is okay in chatbot. Um, okay. It's a little sad. Where are you? Hmm. I think um Fine. Dashboard, okay. I feel like there was a much easier way to do this, which I am not getting. <laughs> Okay. Well, guys, I think what I'm going to rather suggest, sorry, I will try and figure out how to, how to spin this wheel. I can't believe I've forgotten how to do, um, how I can't believe how I've forgotten how to, on the top of the wheel. No, that also doesn't work. Um, so strange. R, R, R. And there it is, folks, why repetition is so important. And practicing before you do anything right. <laughs> I, I remember last stream, I was like, I'm going to practice this. I'm going to like check this all out. And then this one, I was like, eh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> um, how to add spin wheel. Sources, maybe I've got to look there. 
Okay, I think let's, yeah, I think we're just gonna choose one. How about we do this? How about we do this? Um, happy little technical difficulties. Listen, a, a, a live stream with me without some technical challenges is no live stream at all. <laughs> okay, so let's do, let's do the following. Um, I actually, I can't even remember what, what the colors are, I don't think. So I'm gonna choose blue, I think there's a blue. Okay, there's a blue, oh, it's melodic. It's melodic minor, B flat melodic minor. Sorry, guys. But here it is. I chose blue, so let's do B flat melodic liner. Um, okay, so let's do, um, let's, I will start with B flat melodic minor. It's a good idea. Next time I'm going to ask you guys to choose. Okay, so I'm going to do B flat melodic minor. Okay, wait, I want to think about this. Okay, wait. So this is again. So you'll see I play a scale, but I'm not just going to launch in. I'm actually going to think about it. So I know, okay, B flat minor is related to G flat major. Again, if you don't know this, this is like end, 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 end game, right? This, this is the scale that you're learning in like grade seven and eight level, right? Top level. So if you don't know B flat minor, please play B flat major. Okay, but B flat minor um, is related to, no, D flat major. I talk nonsense. It's related to D flat major. So we have um, five flats, and I know that my sixth and seventh are raised, so it'll be G natural and A natural. There I go. Okay, so now. My B flat minor. Now, of course, I've repeated the scale thousands of times in my life, thousands of times, quite literally. But still, especially under pressure, I'm like, I've got to think about it for just a quick second if I want to deliver it first time correctly. So I never go in blind. I never just like, you know, go with it. Okay. Um, let's go for another, let's go for another, um, go for another scale. Give me a key. Go again. Some letters, please. Some letters. Maybe <laughs> throw in some of the scales now that you know you're playing along. What scales do you want to play? And while you do that, I'm going to half still try and fix my, um, my thing. Okay, we've got G. Um, F, G sharp, A, A major, yeah, A flat, it's kind of G sharp, so that kind of is two of that. For the G, you've got two Gs and two G sharps. Somebody's got a chance to repeat, finish it off. A flat, oh, we got three A flats. A flat, G sharp, same, same. So we're going to do A flat something, which is nasty for everybody. I promise you guys that for less advanced players, the next one I'm going to do is going to be an easy one. Okay, we're going to do an easy one next. Okay, so let's do A flat. So um, let's go now for, um, let's go for major, minor, choose one of these, maybe just choose a color. Let's just choose colors. Choose one of the colors. Um, and let's, let's look which one we get color for three. Choose a color. Choose a color. Okay, we've got yellow, green, brown, another yellow, we've got two yellows, white. <gasps> I love it. White with a vengeance. <laughs> um, pink, yellow, brown, green. We've got two yellows still. Um, let's see what else we get. Um, C sharp, uh, oh, we got a late C sharp pink. Okay, two pinks, blue, blues, yeah, true, there's a, like a greeny blue and a blue. Um, blues, pink, so we got two pinks, two yellows, we need to finalize one of those. Somebody choose a pink or a yellow. This is your chance, ah, we got a third yellow. Yellow it is, harmonic minor, okay, so we've got, now it is G sharp, G sharp harmonic minor. Okay. So first thing we try and figure out is the relative major. So we go, what's the relative major? It's B major. Then the next, the next step is to actually go and say, okay, what is the raised seventh? It's the seventh note of the scale. So G, A, B, C, D, E, uh, no, wait, yeah, G, A, I did sorry, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. F is the one, F. Sorry guys, I think there's like a little bit of a delay from the comments to my speaking. So apologies if you miss your chance to put in your votes. Um, there seems to be a bit of a delay. 
Okay, so we got seven. Then we've got um, the seven. So G sharp minors or B majors already got an F sharp in it. So it becomes hold the phone, F double sharp. <laughs> I think I need like sound effects right now, <laughs> like screaming and <laughs> anarchy. No, double sharp. Okay, so we've got F double sharp here. So, um, which is the same as a G fingering. Okay, that's, that's like, in most scales, I have like little like things that I know to remember, like this scale, I always know to remember, obviously the B major, but I always think that E to G, which is obviously E to F double sharp, but that, that little transition that I always remember. So, um, let's go G sharp minor. So we've got... G sharp minor, like that. Again, a lot of experience, a lot of practice, but still have to go through and actually work it out in my brain. Okay. Eventually, some of these scales do become really like automatic. You don't have to think about them so much anymore. Um, but for the most part, um, you, well, at least when you're learning them first time, you actually just have to have to do it. Okay. Let's do one more, one more for all of you guys. We're going to do a G major. Um, a G, it's just a G major scale. There's no harmonic and melodic here. <laughs> just G major. So we're going to do G major, and you guys can, um, you guys can decide. Well, you don't decide. It's G major. Play it. But you can decide if you want to do one octaves, two octaves, and how many sharps and flats and all of that you want to have. That's totally up to you guys. So go for it. G major, and then we're going to actually do like a thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs middle. We're going to have some fun here. <laughs> we'll see how you guys are doing. We do this in our technique classes, by the way. We do like little scale tests, and I'm asking, and everyone has to give like their self rate themselves how they're doing with those scales. It's um, terrifying for the classes. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I love you, but I love you enough to torture you with scales. <laughs> okay, cool. And then we're going to carry on with some learning. Just get back into. Um, a bit more scale learning. <laughs> yeah, I don't expect there to be such scary scales today. But the point is, most of you, not much, maybe not most of you, but many of you might not be learning those scales yet. So you see those scales, don't be overwhelmed. You're not supposed to know them yet. Cool. If you don't know G major, um, you might just be like a really beginner player, which is totally fine. But if you don't know G major, that's fine. But that's one of your first scales you're going to learn. So good place to start. Okay. My wheel betrayed me. You've betrayed me, wheel. Actually, that's me being <laughs> not, not prepared enough. Okay. Um, let's go on to um, look a little bit more at kind of my strategy for learning your scales. Now, there are probably like so many different methods and approaches and well I don't know if they're that many different ones I think this is fairly standard but there probably are variations here and I do think you have to find what works best for you like I, I don't think that there's one size fits all in this but here's what I do and here's what I encourage my students to do my community to do or you guys to do that are actively part of the, the membership community and also the um, technique classes and, and all of that is number one and you might want to write this down Number one, you are going to learn one scale a week. Quite seriously, you learn one scale a week. You spend a whole week practicing that scale. Um, we don't just practice that scale, though. We have got, depending on your level, we've got a couple of little technical exercises around that scale as well. And I'm going to show you that out of the scale book in a moment, just to show you, um, number one, why that's so good, and number two, what types of exercises. But you're going to maybe practice a couple of technical exercises or just play the scale in the arpeggio every day for a week. Perfect. No problems there, right? So that's your first, um, the first, first thing. One scale of a week. Then I move through the circle of fifths. Now, if you're a less advanced player, you're not going to go through like all the flats and all the sharps. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have to kind of figure out a bit of a revised pattern. But move through the the circle, that lovely circle of fifths. Because what it does is it really helps you to, to understand, number one, the connection. So where you kind of feeling the connection between the, each key. So, for example, if you're doing like, 
um, F major and then you do B flat major, you'll realize, oh, there's only one more flat. It's not a huge shift from F major. So actually, it's not a big thing to learn F major and then move to B flat because it's only one extra additional note. Pretty easy. Or if you're doing F major and then relative minor, so I do recommend that as well. So do the major, then the minor. Major, minor, major, minor. Because again, F, F major, then D minor, the relative minor, same notes as F major, exactly the same notes. You're just adding that, if you're playing the harmonic, that extra C sharp in it, or if you're doing the melodic, you know, the what C sharp, the B natural and C sharp. Okay, so you, there's small changes to the scale. It's not a huge, like, whole totally new key. So that, that's, I think, a very, very logical and systematic way, and it also helps your brain to kind of organize the information better, where you kind of like, you know, okay, the, um, the, the major, this is C major's got no sharps and flats, and then we've got the first sharp, which is G major. And then we're like, okay, and then one further from that is D major, so two sharps. So you're just starting to kind of put it all together in context of the whole system. Then, um, for, yeah, for more advanced players, definitely go and do some other technical exercises, because playing the scale, just playing the scale, can get a little boring. Um, and especially for the easier scales that you know really well, you're going to want to now start shifting it over from that sort of like learning and memorizing space into kind of that I'm now using it for technique space. I've said it before, I'll say it again, is learn your scales by memory. So, 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 so important. Again, it's not really from memory. Understand your scales and it's there. It's like maths, right? If you have to work out what four plus four is by counting on your fingers, then you're in trouble. But if you understand the system and how it works, it's a lot easier. Or maybe I think multiplication is a better example of this, like four times four. Um, if you understand in the beginning, you had to like work it out. But eventually, as you went on, you kind of memorized, you know, what four times four was. Okay. So really, really important. Um, then this is a really good one. And I actually, again, sorry, technique class. I'm using you guys as guinea pigs, well, like as um, <laughs> examples a lot today. But I forced them to do this a little, a couple of weeks ago as well. Because I realized with another student I was working with, I tell my students to do this, I tell everybody to do this, but until I actually make you do it, very often it just doesn't get done. And I know this because I also didn't do it when I was younger and my teacher said, practice your scales like this. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that sometime until she forced me to do it in a whole lesson. And what you do is you take your flute and you actually practice your scales without playing. You just do the fingers like this, practice it. And say the note names while you're at it. Really, really, really good. Um, don't double up on notes. So don't do things like say, um, like, oh, what's a good example? Well, just back to that G sharp minor, like where you say G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E and then go G, G sharp. No, it's F double sharp, G sharp. There should be one of each note in the scale. Otherwise, it starts getting very confusing and actually it's more confusing than helpful. So, um, yeah, make sure that you are um, practicing your scales without playing it. It's a fantastic way to not only memorize your scales and get it under your fingers and understand your scales, but actually also a really good way to build connection between your brain and your fingers between what your eyes see, because we don't actually see our fingers most of the time, and actually start forming that connection. Um, when, I, when I, like, for example, imagine playing something, I can actually almost see my fingers moving. I have this kind of finger, like, template in my brain of what those movements look and feel like. Very powerful. Then, once you've learned a few scales, so, for example, maybe you've learned, like, six scales. You've learned your first three ma majors and minors. Then you're going to want to go and cycle, like test them. And like, like we did now where you're just randomly asking questions, um, asking like checking your scales. Or a really nice thing to do is to just like go through your scales all in one octave and just cycle through them and see if you can play them all one after the other. So that'll look like this. So for example, let's do the first, up to the first one sharp and flat. So I'm going to do F major. <laughs> then straight away D minor then C major A minor then G major then E minor 
Now again, if you haven't practiced these scales, you're probably like, help. But I promise you, if you've spent six weeks going through each of those scales, calmly and, and, and thoughtfully, and maybe even in between, um, for those of you that are doing the scale course, um, we've got, so we've, we also we work one key at a time. And what happens is every, at the end of every week, we have a little test on the scales that we've done. And then at the end, I think of four weeks, we have a test. At the end of six weeks, we have a test. At the end of the, um, there might even be like other, another test built in. But we have these little tests, regular tests in between. And right at the end of the course, we have a test on all the, we do all the scales in the first part of the course up to the first two sharps and flats. So we have these little tests moments built in. They're whole weeks that we dedicate just to testing and, and kind of, mixing up your scales because it is an important skill and it's its own skill entirely right so if you are um so separate out those things the learning part the like technique part which we're going to get to in a moment and the testing kind of memorization and jumping between them part um i want to just maybe I've, I've actually kind of pulled these out um for those of you that have the scale book we had, well, I've actually revised these levels a little bit because I realized, like, being more specific about the different, like, phases of the, of the flute playing journey is actually better. And um, funnily enough, I've even considered adding another level still. And I've realized, I think this is why they have eight levels in all the, in the exam syllabi. <laughs> I should have just assumed there was a really good reason for it in the first place. But um, let me just share this with you really quickly. Um, so here it is, I've got other criteria in here as well. So this is just the first kind of three. Um, so beginner, novice, which is kind of that phase. I, I, this is these words or these titles I've assigned. So don't think that these are a thing. Um, developing, which is a purely a word that I've made up for this, for this phase. Cause it's sort of this between phase between this and, and becoming an early intermediate player. Um, early intermediate, intermediate, advanced, virtuoso. I think there could definitely be a, a phase still between advanced and early and intermediate. I'm thinking perhaps of adding like a late intermediate or an early advanced or something like that, because this also can be a bit of a big jump. But basically, you'll see here the scales that are expected. So if you're a beginner player, before you can consider yourself a novice player, you should have mastered these three scales at least. So you should be fairly comfortable with these three scales. And then you kind of reach the end of the beginner level, in my opinion, my very humble opinion. Of course, within that, there's a lot of nuance as well. And this, is, this isn't actually like a definite thing, like, okay, now you're here, now you're here. This is, remember, this is a scale that you're moving along um, all the time. Then we have the novice level, where you're learning your first um, three majors, so FGC, but you're also adding the relative minors. All your scales are still one octave, but you do you have start um, started learning your one octave chromatic scale. Okay, so that's your next level. Then you've got the developing level, which is now you're adding the D major and the B flat major. So that second, like, <laughs> scale. Sorry, I just got that. That was good, yeah. Puns. <laughs> I do enjoy them. Um, but here we're adding now the second sharp and second flat. You'll see here in this next level. Um, the A minor, I'm, I like to get students already now to start practicing that up to the 12th. Um, G major, F major, all of these, in fact, you're doing two octave scales now. So you're starting to push into that, that um, high register. Early intermediate, um, we're doing up to three sharps and flats. So by the end of early intermediate, you are, you're able to play at least up to three sharps and flats, sometimes even already four. Um, for those in the, in the community and also in the, in the technique classes, we've actually been pushing into four already with you guys in the early intermediate phase. Um, because, you know, it's good to push yourself just a little bit. But if you're struggling with that, those, the three and four sharps and flats in, and you're in the sort of early intermediate phase, this is why. You know, this is why. So I included the, the other stuff, which I'm not going to go through in detail today. But um, you'll see there's other things like how much the breathing, how, how, you know, how much of the scale you can play in one breath. And there's the register, how high on the flute you could comfortably go, all of that. By the intermediate phase, you're able to play about five sharps and flats, all in two octaves. And you may be starting to add a couple of dominant sevenths and diminishes. 
So the grade, inter early intermediate, I sort of consider, for those who know the graded systems, it's sort of a grade four, three to four, but a grade four level by the end. And intermediate, you're heading into that grade five level. Advanced, um, and this is where I almost feel like there needs to be a little nice category in between. So intermediate sort of grade five to six. Advanced, we're doing sort of grade seven to eight already. Um, now you know all your majors and minors, right? Now we're getting there, getting to the heart of it. But you see how far along you have to be to actually get that far. So when I was speaking about B flat minor and G sharp um, minor, like this is advanced stuff, right? Maybe in the intermediate, some of you are already doing it because it is five sharps and flats, so we are there. Um, but actually, it's pretty, it's fairly advanced stuff already. And, and we are, of course, doing diminishes and whole tones and all kinds of extra stuff that we add to it. Um, the virtuoso player, there you're able to play up to the fourth. Um, I call them D4 and C4. I know that like in the piano terms, that's not the thing. I, I, D4 and C4 on the flute, which is C1 being the lowest C, C2, C3, C4. Um, I know, I, personally, I like to relate it back to flute and not to piano because <laughs> I just, I actually think for, for a lot of people, I think it's less confusing. Um, and um, although I know it's not always like that in other books. But anyway, um, so that you're going into that fourth register D. So you're going up into that fourth register D. Um, you, you're sort of playing the extended scales. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's really advanced. But as you can see, there is a progression of learning here. Now, here's a good question, right? Okay, you're not going to be on a big who... Um, we are actually going to be releasing a revised version of this um, of this levels chart on the site. But for those of you who know the um, the levels chart, there's like a whole, whole lot of other criteria, like articulation and registers and rhythm and counting and internet. I mean, there's a whole lot of other stuff involved in that as well. So it's not just a question of like I can play these scales. <laughs> okay, it's much more than that. But then you'd start pushing to the next, the next lot of scales. Or at least when you're really comfortable with these scales and you know them really well and you're comfortable with them, then you start adding another one and another one. Then you start adding more. So you, you don't even have to wait to be in that level. If you're feeling comfortable with those scales, you're allowed to start adding, even if you're falling, else, uh, falling behind elsewhere. But the point is, it's a, it's a systematic, step-by-step, -step, logical approach to learning your scales, which hopefully hopefully, you can see, is not overwhelming, actually. I mean, the learning part is maybe a bit overwhelming, but this is not as bad as it looks. Um, so, really, um, don't, don't try to do too much. I, I really, really, I mean, I've said this a thousand times. I'm going to say this a thousand times more. Um, do, not, do not try to do too much too soon. It is the biggest problem I see with less advanced players is trying to take on too much. Or even if you're really advanced and you've never learned your scales and you're like, okay, now I'm going to start learning my scales. You finally convinced me. <laughs> no. Um, still start from the beginning. Still start slowly. Your brain can only absorb so much information before it wants to explode. Okay. So please take it, take it slow and gentle. Okay. So... I'm going to do a little bit of a giveaway and let's hope this system actually works because actually this was, I did look at this beforehand and everything's changed. So let's just see if this is going to work. Um, so what happens, and let's just test if this, um, if this works, you're going to put um, into the chat box you're going to put a exclamation mark um, with a raffle, with the word raffle. So it'll look like this. You'll put an exclamation mark and then the word raffle, like that. And I'm hoping that the system will not um, let me down. Let us see if this will work. Um, 
because again everything changed We've got, okay. Um, let's see, this actually might even be where I previously got the spinny wheel thing to work, so I can also try that. <laughs> um, Let us see if this will work. Okay, I found the spin wheel. I think I can get the spin wheel to work now. That's cool. And so I don't. Pinwheel. Okay, I figured out this pinwheel at last. Um, <laughs> don't worry, there's only one. It, it, the software doesn't allow, does not allow more than that. So you will be only allowed to enter once. But yeah, let's 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 play nice, guys. Let's all let's be be fair. Um, And give away. Okay, sorry guys, I'm just trying to make sure that this is actually working as it should because um, otherwise we'll. Okay, I think I need to start getting like a stream manager who just does this stuff for me so that I don't have to <laughs> be sorting all these things out, yes. Um, okay, I'm going to see if this is going to work, let's just see. Um, I don't see anything coming through which makes me think nothing is happening here. So let's just see if I pick a winner. Sorry, guys. I think I made you all enter your nice raffles in for nothing because um, that is indeed not working. So I'm going to see if I can get this um, get this to go. Otherwise, I'm going to um, <laughs> thank you. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to just look at you know. And I'm sure you guys can relate. I feel like things change so fast 
maybe it's just that again I've, but like I literally did this like six months ago and I'm already like where are the stuff it's not this I found it I found it I think I found it I think I found it okay I'm gonna do this properly I'm gonna do this properly um, and then we should have a we should have a fair game okay so the first thing that we're giving away today um, is a copy of the flute practice scale book for anybody who would like um, a copy of the flute practice scale book and we are going to um, we are going to send you the actual physical book now please we had some winners last time and they ran away and I, I couldn't find you anymore so please don't run away like let us know who you are send us an email or um, something and so that we know who you are because we'd love to get you your um, your prize so I'm gonna run this giveaway for just 10 minutes and you get if you win you get a copy of the flute practice scale book you guys have all had a practice putting in your raffles so you know how it works and um, we are going to we're going to do that okay so it will hopefully now work properly and if it doesn't we'll continue because then it's not gonna happen okay can I invite all of you to put in your raffle exclamation mark raffles one more time let's see if it works <laughs> sorry guys um, again if it doesn't then we will um, yeah so what you do is you put in an exclamation mark and raffle you can just copy what everyone else has done exclamation mark and raffle um, and hopefully that will actually work properly this time it worked so easily last time Okay, let's carry on a little bit. I actually, while I'm um, actually doing that little giveaway, I actually want to just run through very briefly um, the book and what the book looks like and how the book works. For those of you who don't know the book and haven't bought the book before, but even if you have got the book, um, get your books out. For those who don't know, this is the book. It's the um, Flute Practice, the Scale book. Um, and it's very big it's a very fat book with lots and lots and lots of scales and scale exercises in it these scale exercises are um, based actually on a system that my teacher introduced to me um, which i was studying with in vienna um, by based i mean very loosely based because i kind of ad adapted the system that i think is a little bit uh, more user friendly for kind of advancing players let me put it that way um, when players get to a certain level, then I do kind of expect them to um, do quite a lot more advanced stuff. But um, this is kind of the, um, the system that, that I use. And basically, um, it's structured in three ways. There's three sections to the book. So I'm just going to quickly walk everybody through that, um, through the book. Guys, I do have bad news. I don't think the raffle is working. Still not working. I don't understand why. Um, and I'm so sorry about that. I can promise the next live stream we will catch up. We will do the giveaways that we were going to do in this give in this live stream. And I will actually um, and I will actually um, yeah, we'll do this. We'll add this giveaway to the lot. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, everybody. And um, perhaps we'll work out to we'll actually maybe look if we can do a giveaway through our community spaces like on Facebook and um, on YouTube and all of that, we'll do like a, a giveaway after the live stream. I think that might be best. Because um, what we were going to give away was we were going to give away a copy of the scale book and also a um, copy or a, a, anybody who has not yet signed up for the course to actually have um, free access to that course or sign you up for that course. Um, so apologies for that. I'm going to close this, but I'm pretty sure this doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be working for whatever reason on this earth. I do not know. Um, so let's let's get back to the scale book. I'm going to just quickly show you what this what this guy is all about. So and how to use it because it also gives you some insights into how to um, how to actually practice. Now we've got this book available as a hard copy. You can order it. Um, it's on our on our online shop through the site. You can actually get. We sell the books through Lulu, who do like print on demand publishing. The books are 
really, really like beautifully printed, and I'm quite happy with the printing, although occasionally we've had some issues around shipping and all of that. Um, so if you're having any issues, please just let me know. It's a little out of our hands, but um, we can certainly help as best we can. You can also buy the digital book, which you've got in front of you right now, which you can buy online um, um, on our site directly as well. So we've got this kind of book, which is divided up into these three sections. So you have your basic scales. And in the basic scale section, this is just kind of like a, um, a rundown of all your scales. Now, of course, depending on your st stage you're in, whether you're like really advanced or whether you are less advanced, you're going to be, um, you know, doing this, doing different scales. Like the dominance, the diminished, the whole turn scale, I do not expect you to do this until quite a bit later on. And I'm going to show you in a moment the practice plans at the end of the book in the different levels to show you exactly what you, what you should be working on and, and how you should be working on it. Um, so that's the first section is just the basic, basic scales. We've added a few fun quotes and um, goodies and a whole foreword on how to use the book and how to practice and all of that stuff. Um, then there's the scale exercises. And remember I said we want to use our scales not just for practicing on memorizing scales, but then we want to do some nice technical exercises on those scales. And that's what these scale exercises are for. So you're practicing the scales here in these different patterns. So you've got the eight notes, so eight note patterns. You've got six note patterns. You've got four notes, so da 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 patterns, and even three note patterns. And for me, the magic of the system is if you think back to that study we did right at the beginning where, as mentioned, there was like bits of that that were just from the scale book. This is exactly an example where your scale doesn't always start on G and end on G if you have a G major scale. Like sometimes, like we saw in that Bach minuet, you have a scale that starts on a D and goes up to, I don't know, an F or whatever it is. And so to practice your scales in different patterns can be so powerful because then you're actually learning not just your scales, but you're learning to identify them in different scenarios as well. So that's what these scale exercises at, um, train you to do, is to practice them in all these different patterns. And there's like lots of exercises. The reason this book is so huge, it's because it isn't just scales. Sorry, my camera is hating me right now. It's not just scales, it's kind of the point. It's scales and, 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 and a whole lot of exercises. And um, there's then also for more advanced players, I personally love this section, if I dare say so myself. I find it really fun to do all these advanced exercises because they're really, there's a lot of like uh, the, the, the thirds, which you of course find in the Tafan al Gobert and the sixths as well. Um, all these little kind of finger combinations that very often are found in the Bachs and the Handels and the Mozarts, um, these very sort of common finger combinations. Um, little arpeggio combinations, broken arpeggios, all kinds of goodies that you find so commonly in music. So it's just taking the scales and, and putting them into patterns that actually come up frequently in music is the idea. And again, with all the majors and all the minors written out for you. Um, good question. Should you play all the exercises by heart? Very, very good question. As many, look, to start with no, to start with don't worry about it too much. But eventually, it's a good thing to at least some of them that you really enjoy. For example, scale exercise number one. Like if I can, if I can teach you one thing today, <laughs> um, other than practice your scales, it's this little scale exercise number one. Um, it's ma it's magical. This is this exercise. I mean, I've seen it actually in uh, like people as long as far gone as like Quants. I think it was Quants or Pop did like these. They had technique books where they did exactly this exercise of just cascading the scale. So you have so what you're doing is you're always just playing an octave of the scale and then you go one note higher and then an octave of the scale and one note higher this exercise you could for example like do from memory just force yourself to do this from memory it is so helpful it is so useful and maybe you can start doing more and more of them from memory as you go along but in the beginning i don't expect you to be able to do all of them certainly not now Again, if you've got the book and you're like, um, there's like this massive fat book, like what do you think I've got time for here? Right at the end of the book, um, we have got quite detailed practice plans. And we tell you exactly um, which scale to play, which exercises to play, and we've broken it up into the different levels. So novice, developing, 
um, intermediate, advanced. I've, I think I only put in four, four different levels for the book. Um, basically, it's the same exercises, excepting you will um, only play up one octave scales, for example, and you'll only do the technical exercises one octave. And we have another resource for you guys in a moment, which I'll show you how to get hold of. But you'll see I haven't included beginners in this group because you can buy the book as a beginner, like awesome, but it's not going to be that helpful to you yet as a beginner because you're just really learning those basic scales. This book becomes particularly powerful when you're an intermediate and up player. I think this is where the book really shines. Um, prior to that, I would probably recommend rather um, get our Let's Practice resources. Those are, I think, going to be more useful for you um, if you're an earlier player. But again, you know, the book, the nice thing about, about a book like this, similar to some other books that are around, is you buy the book and it's going to be there for you, like for the rest of your flute journey. You, you know, you're not going to run out of things to practice in it. I, at least, I don't think so, because I still have plenty in that book that I practice um, when, on well daily basis when I have time to actually practice nicely. Yes, I don't always have time to practice anymore. It's quite sad. Okay. I also walk you through exactly like a system on, on like which order to play those scales in and also depending on um, which level you are in. So I actually give different suggestions, slightly different suggestions for the different levels. And this is what I know a lot of students love the most about this book is I've even done you a favor and I've actually written out a practice plan for a day by day plan for which exercises to do from the scale exercise section um, or from the, even from the advanced scale exercise section as well for the advanced players. I give you the exact numbers of what to do. So it's really nice if, you, if you're one of those people you don't know what to practice every day and you're like, I know I need to do scales and technique, but like, what do I do? Well, just follow this plan. That's my advice. In the book itself, we put um, kind of the first couple of weeks and then we um, add a QR code. Where is it? Um, online, we've got the full plan. Um, there has been a request to add page numbers to the actual plans of the different exercises, and we will be looking into how to do that as well in a way that you know, doesn't make it very chaotic. Um, so, um, we, and we'll update the plans online so you guys can grab those plans. Sorry, there is, oh, I think I, I, link, I link in the digital book, I link to those additional plans. Um, and then, so, so that you really, again, we can see this lovely system of breaking it up scale a week and moving through the book like that. Um, the, other, the other really big thing, and this kind of also brings me a little bit um, into the course, which we're starting on Wednesday, actually, 22nd of March, we're doing a, re, like a rerun of our flute scale course, which is a three month long program. So it is quite a long and um, kind of, I wouldn't say it's a huge commitment because you can do it in six months, you can do it in a year, you can do it as long as you like. But we work through every week for three months, we're working through the first two sharps and flats. There's a second part to the course as well, where we then go on to the three and four sharps and flats, and part three is still coming. But um, you basically can, um, in that course we do this very strongly. So what happens is, is you have the scale video where you learn the scale, and I show you the scale and how the scale works. But then we do something that I think is really important to do with a scale, especially when you become more advanced or you get to know a scale really well, is to not just play the scale. Not just play the scale, but actually use the scale to practice something else. And we call these practice focuses. And so we can focus on things like tone, vibrato, breathing and support, learning how to ex extend the breath, we can use it to practice articulation. We can use it to increase our finger speed um, for intonation, for dynamics and tone color, for expression and phrasing. We can use it even just to kind of focus on the body and see what's going on with our, us physically. So we can be using a scale and the scale exercises to be doing so much more than just practicing scales and scale exercises. And this is, this is really why I think um, it is so important um, to, to repeat, 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 repeat. I want to just share a, st a story from a student in the community. You know who you are. <laughs> I just think it's a lovely story. So um, we have a student in the community who was part of our, the first, first, first time we ever ran the scale course, which was like 
four years ago, I think. It was just on Patreon. I was running it fairly informally and kind of testing out this new format. And this particular student, I remember so clearly getting this frantic email from the student being like, I am so lost and confused and overwhelmed. I can't even kind of get through one scale from the top to bottom. It's just overwhelming and just too much. And me at that point was like setting this crazy pace. We were doing a major and a minor scale in a week and just like phew, machining through all of them. It was, it was hectic. Sorry, guys. I learn. <laughs> I learn about pacing. And anyway, same student about a year and a half ago when we launched the book and the course together, did, did it all again, this course, and, and went through it again. And this time I remember the feedback was, Sure, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting these scales, but I find that I'm just managing to practice the scale. Like I don't even have time to focus on the tone and the vibrato and all of that. Like I'm just getting the scale. And I said to that student, don't worry about it. Just keep, you're going to do this, this course and you're going to do this material again and again and again. And next time you do it, you're going to be able to focus on other things a little bit more. Well, here we are. Students are going to start doing the course yet again. We've been doing a little bit of prep work in our technique classes to kind of get people ready for um, and just sort of testing through scales and kind of taking a little bit of a temperature check where you are. This particular student is now able to fairly comfortably play definitely the first couple of sharps and flat keys, but is so comfortable with the, those early like G major, F major and um, C major and probably actually even D major and B flat major to a certain extent that actually the student can now start to practice tone, maybe think about breathing and support, all of those things as well. In fact, not maybe, I know that the student can because we've already started to do it. And it's just again a testimony to repeat, 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 keep cycling through. I cycled through my scales in this way for probably the better part of six years. Just going through, going through, going through. I still like to, to do it, um, but to be honest with you, life has just been really mad. We've just moved and everything, so it has, there hasn't been the time for it as much as I'd like, but I still like to kind of just get myself, I choose a key and I just go with it each week and cycle through them. So that is, that is basically what the idea of the scale book is. And we've got some suggestions here on different types of things you can work on um, and, and how to do that. Um, we actually, for those of you who would like, I'm going to fairly soon end this live stream because we're going to pop on over to um, our live monthly hangout, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's a lovely moment for us to connect the membership community. We all connect. Um, people get to ask questions live in person. Um, and I'm going to actually share in that hangout in a moment a little bit more specifics around how you can use the scales to practice different things and give you guys some ideas there. Um, but really, have it in your mind, if maybe not straight away, like, you know, your, your practice focus for a scale could just be learning the scale. Like, that is a practice focus, right? I'm just learning the scale. But you still have a focus. You're still not just playing the scale through mindlessly. You're still focusing on something, which is just getting the notes right. <laughs> like, that's okay. But if you're playing your scales, you've been playing them for a while, ask yourself before you play a scale, why am I playing the scale? Am I memorizing it? Am I testing my memory? Am I going to do it because I want to like, play a scale really nice and fast? Am I going to, so I'm going to maybe do it with a metronome and do it in different rhythms. Am I going to do it for articulation or because I just want to get a really beautiful tone? So why are you playing the scale? And if you don't have a why, then find a why. You're wasting your time, by the way. I mean, not wasting your time. It's maybe a little bit harsh. But I would say you are definitely not using your time as well as you could be. Let's, let's put it that way but kind of. <laughs> so that's, that's, my, that's what I have to tell you guys today on, on scale practice. So small bits, break it up. Don't need to do everything in one go. And um, don't feel like you need to do all the octaves in one go either. Start small, slowly build, 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 build until you get to that level where you can play all of your scales. I have seen students walk through this process. Genuinely, it's such a cool thing to watch. And I've seen students moving um, to the point where they're suddenly able to play all their majors and minors. So if you're in the beginning stages, there's lots to learn and, and lots of hope. Take it slow. If you are an advanced player, keep going. The work does not stop. Ever, ever, ever. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
So I'm going to wrap it up because I want to go grab a cup of tea before the Hangout. If anybody wants to join the Hangout still, um, we haven't we haven't this time around made that we don't make the tickets kind of publicly available, um, but you can still sign up. Go sign up for a premium membership, and um, I will actually, if I catch you, I will be on my inbox now to see if there's any um, things coming through, and I will send you the link um, immediately. We'll, I'm also going to be posting the link into the Practice Club community group on the site, so if you do you want to join that hangout now? You're welcome to do so. It's live on Zoom, so it's quite a nice kind of interactive space, but you can have your camera and your microphone off and you genuinely do not need to be, you know, part of it in any way, except if you would like to be. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for, for joining me on this slightly wild ride and, you know, only a few lots of technical hiccups. By the way, just, just, to, just to prove a point, I did f at least figure out Maybe we can do one just because I love the wheel. You guys love the wheel, but at least now I know. Actually, there's an easy an easy fix for this. Um, so at least I can do the wheel now. Let's see. Can I do the wheel? Um, <laughs> let's at least do the wheel, then I'll let you guys go. The wheel. The wheel, the wheel. Yeah, if anybody is a premium member here and you haven't signed up for the Hangout yet, I, I will post the link. I do just post the link onto the, um, onto the group because it's not, we don't, do it like that because we want you to miss out. Like, please don't get me wrong. It's just purely so we have an idea of numbers. It helps us. Okay, let's see. No, I think there's something like, did it spin? No, I think this isn't connecting properly. I think that's the problem. Um, yes, I think it's um, angry with me. No, okay. It's not, let's not add fuel to fire. This is not working for me today. <laughs> Just gotta, gotta admit defeat when you have it. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your Saturdays. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the Hangout who's joining. And otherwise, I will do more of these live streams. I do need to do more of them. They are lots of fun. And I will have our giveaways and our, our spin wheel will work next time. It will. I felt so cool last time. I feel so uncool this time. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you as always. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>